Good evening, everybody. It's about that time, I think. It's good to see you tonight. And we appreciate you being here. If you're tuning us in online, we're glad that you're there. Let me wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Tomorrow's the big turkey day. A lot of families be together. Some families won't be, but it's kind of what we have to do this, this day and time for what we're going through. But we're glad that you're here. Uh, Pastor's not at with us tonight. He had to have some tests done this afternoon. And wasn't going to be able to, so he asked me just to take care of things. We'll do that, and uh, we'll have you in here now here in no time at all tonight. So let's get us a hymn book to start off with and turn number 469. Number 469. And let's sing the little song, Jesus Saves. Number 469. You'll be thinking in a little bit if you'd like to say a word of what you're thankful for. We'll give you a chance to do that. But let's stand together and sing Jesus Saves. First, second, last verse of number 469. number 221 page number 221 and sing somebody loves me number 221 first second last verse somebody loves me <clears throat> Somebody is Jesus said. 
be seated. Again, we're glad that you're here tonight. We appreciate you coming. Uh, crowd's way down, but we knew it probably would be. We've got some folks out of town. We've got folks that are sick. We've got folks that are preparing for Thanksgiving tomorrow. And families maybe that's come in, different reasons, but we're glad that you're here. We've got several on our prayer list that we need to mention, and we'll run over those, and then we'll take any requests that, that you have tonight. Um, but if you've got your prayer list, everybody got one. I think we've got enough out. Let's read over our names tonight and remember these folks in prayer. Let me mention, first off, if you didn't know, Brother Rodney's stepfather passed away. Uh, this was the man that pretty much raised Rodney, uh, but he had been sick and uh, had the COVID, but other complications, had a heart attack, some different things took place, but he did pass away. They're having his services down at Rutledge at a church down there on Friday. Visitation from 5 till 7 and a 7 p.m. service. So you remember Rodney and Angie and their family. Keep them in your prayers. Uh, there's a lot of others around. There's been a lot of deaths in our area. The funeral home's been busy. And um, a friend of, of ours uh, that uh, was actually a friend to Matt uh, went to school with Matthew, and they were good friends when they were in school together. Uh, Becca is her name. She had a baby about seven months ago, I think it was. The baby was sick when it was born, but Lisa has been watching her on uh, line as, as progression's been made, but her baby passed away uh, just a day or so ago, and they're having their services on Friday. But remember their family in your prayers, if you will. Still remember Kim Trent and their family. Shauna called the pastor, said put Kim on the prayer list. She's still having a tough time with her daughter's passing, so let's remember her. And uh, we still have a lot of folks that are shut in, not able to go. Folks are afraid to get out and go, and every, they're advising folks to still stay at home and wear masks and be careful. The COVID is still, numbers are high, and a lot of folks in the hospital sick with it. And uh, so we just need to pray. Hopefully this, this vaccine will help things. We're hoping that it will. And we're just hoping to be able to get back to some sort of normalcy. I know everybody has suffered because of it. But we certainly, you know, when you think about going to the hospital, I told Lisa, I said, I'd hate to be in the hospital. I'd hate to be sick. Uh, but most of all now, because she wouldn't get to be with me. And that'd be tough. And these folks are laying there. Matter of fact, a, a friend we know, her dad was in the hospital there by himself. And uh, he just passed away. And that's sad when your family uh, don't get to be with you whenever you're sick. And uh, so it's, it's a tough time for a lot of people. A lot of people are suffering. A lot of people are going through some real hardship. But still in the midst of all of that, there's things to be thankful for. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about in just a few minutes. Let's read over these names and have a special prayer tonight as it's just before Thanksgiving. We certainly want to have a prayerful heart and, and be praying for... Uh, for these folks who are sick. Let's go over our list. Mark Little, Jerry Campbell, Lynn and Wanda Hall, Gilbert Hall and family, Mike and Connie Little, Elaine James, Nolan and Cindy Collins, Lisa Height, uh, Tom, I cannot say that, Thornton, thank you, Thornton Shaver. I, and I read over this ahead of time so I could get the names as well as I could. Thornton Shaver. Uh, Betty Guthrie, Melody Garrett, Jim and Sherry Foshi, Nancy Bible, Rick and Jamie Bible, Bobby Wisecarver, Becky Wright, Joyce Denny, Jerry Jones, Jack Jones, Leslie Jones, Lackey Stansberry, Patrick Vondren, Morris Franklin, Wayne Prevett, Vincent Braun, Tommy Moody, Faye Kaiser, Bill and Glenna, Ernie and Cleo, Tom and Melissa, John and Judy Stewart, Tammy Cloyd, Cindy and Alan Mango. Tammy's back with us tonight. It's good to see you back, Tammy. Gary Davis, Hughes family, Dorothy Suit, health care workers, Mark Keyes, Ed Keyes, Stephen Garce, Joe and Misty Andrews, Trish Garce, Rick and Kathy, Chris and Sarah, Pete and Leanne, Jeff and Stephanie, Chris and Becky, Alex and Valerie, Rebecca, Tara Churchwell, Rachel Heaton, A.J. Keyes, Wayne Keyes, Patsy Keyes, Geraldine Dye, Josh and Megan Street, Rebecca Street, Rick and Angie Broyles, 
Princey Bailey, Brown Hensley, Randy and Myra Street, Anita Street, Rodney and Angie, Romine Family, Judy Arthur, Judy and Larry Grindstaff, Daryl and Kathy Lee, Susan Jacob and Maggie, Jason Paul, Rick Hughes, Tracy Hughes, Becca and Brandon Edwards, uh, Derek Cook, uh, Madison French, Heather Hughes, Kelsey Hughes, Chelsea Hughes, Justin Wilcox, Jonathan Tipton, Kelly Tipton, Ava and Avera Tipton, Taylor Tipton, Maddie Tipton, Michelle Simpson, our USA, Dalton Bryan, Chelsea and Kylie, Sean and Lindsay, Irene and family, Mary Anders, Alan and Jessica, Bob and Candy Roberts, Hurley family, Diane Nave, Danny Hicks, Terry Blair, Mike Garst, Wilburn Brown, George and Liz, Vestal and Norma Jean, Bob Foster, Kenneth and Peggy, Larry and Barbara, Pastor Miss Debbie, Bernice Williams, B.J. Hughes, Phyllis Hughes, Bill Lovren, uh, Dustin Lauren, and of course I put in Kim Trent down at the bottom. So that's our list from Sunday. A lot of folks, maybe some we don't know, a lot of our own people, our own church folks are on that list that are homesick, going through things, can't get out, different reasons, but we've just got a lot to pray for. Anybody else got a request that we need to put on the list tonight? Anybody? Yes, ma'am. Kristen Bales. All right. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Let's remember Tracy. Anybody else? Got a request you want to mention? Yes, sir. Remember Alan and his family, his mother-in-law, and these, these folks he's mentioned. Anybody else got a request you want to mention? All right, let's remember these folks. Anything else? All right, let's, let's bow for a word of prayer. We'll remember these folks. Let's pray hard that the Lord be with them. Pray for the pastor. I know he would rather be here up in front of you than at home recuperating. Uh, but uh, we appreciate him giving us a call and letting us be able to take care of things. Uh, it's probably about the, the smallest crowd we've had on Wednesday night in some time. But... Uh, but like I say, there's different reasons for folks to be out. So let's just stop and pray for those that have been mentioned, for these are on our list. Let's bow together if we can. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this time that we can come together. Thank you, Lord, for this time of year, what it means to us. Lord, we realize that we are just not thankful enough. Lord, we take so many things for granted. We don't even think about some of the things, Lord, that you do for us every day. But we're thankful tonight that we have health and strength that we can be here. We have a good warm place to be, to come to worship together. We have liberty to be able to do that. Those things we're thankful for. I just pray that you just bless these that are here tonight. Those that are joining us online, pray that you would bless them that are at home, that can't get out and go be with these that are sick. So many names on our list. Lord, you know every situation. You know every one. You know what they're facing. Lord, I just ask, God, that your will could be done in their lives. Lord, your healing hand could be upon them. Father, I just pray that you'd get folks through this time of, of COVID sickness. We just pray that you'd be with these that have had death in their family. I just pray, Father, that you could touch and comfort them as only you can. Father, I just pray that you'd just help our church, Lord, as we try to struggle through this time. All churches all over. Lord, so many folks not going and not being there with their families or church families. We just pray that you'll be with these folks. Help us, Lord, to look to you, to believe, and to have faith. Help us tonight, Lord, as we look at the scriptures. 
Father, I pray that we would find uh, comfort from the th words that are in the Bible, Lord, tonight. And just ask, God, that your will be done. Thank you again for all that you've done, for what you're going to do for us. Father, we just pray that you're just blessing this service. Again, bless these folks on our list. Be with these that have been mentioned. Just, Father, your will be done in their lives. Be with our pastor and help those, Lord, that are part of our church that are sick, that are in need. We just ask you to be with them. Thank you again for all you've done, for what you're going to do. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, Brother Ralph said a while ago, you can be quick and painless, Brother Steve. I said, okay, I will do that. I, uh, Pastor called me yesterday and said he didn't know if he'd feel up to uh, doing anything tonight, and he was a little bit fearful of calling someone else in. So anyway, we're just real glad to stand. I, I will be brief. We won't be long. As I mentioned, uh, it being Thanksgiving, this being Thanksgiving tomorrow, me and Lisa were talking a little while ago, 17 years ago this day, I was packing all the things that I thought I might need in the land of China, getting ready to make that trip halfway across the world. And uh, I could just stop and dwell on that and be thankful uh, for all the the Lord has done for us. But that's not what I want to talk to you about. If you have your Bibles, would like to turn with me. I'm going to turn to uh, some maybe unfamiliar Scripture. Uh, scripture that I don't know that you've read before. I'm sure you have if you read your Bible very much. But the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah chapter 12. There's six verses in chapter 12 of Isaiah. And that's where I'm going to spend just a few minutes. And I promise it'll be just a few minutes. Uh, about being thankful. But let me mention first just some scriptures that you can go to. That you can read. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Philippians 4 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. In Psalms 107, O give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, and for His mercy endureth forever. Psalm 7 says, I will praise the Lord according to His righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Psalms 100. This is the one that Pastor mentioned the other night that he was very familiar with, a scripture that he loved. To make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that have made us. And not we ourselves, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Ephesians 5 says, Giving thanks always. For all things into God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. James says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Matthew says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body and what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? There's all kinds of scriptures all over the Bible that you can go to and you can read about giving thanks. Things we ought to be thankful for. And if you ask folks today, and I was telling Lisa a while ago, I was watching the news and people talking about being thankful. People start out by saying they're thankful for family. They're, they're thankful for health. They're thankful all the... But you know, most of the time you don't hear people say, I'm thankful to the good Lord that he saved my sinful soul and keeps me out of the devil's hell. You don't hear that said very often. But we certainly ought to be thankful for salvation. I want you to look at this scripture with me in the book of Isaiah. And I want to mention some things, and again, uh, very briefly, uh, some things in this chapter that I think we ought to think about. It's maybe an unusual chapter to think or to use during Thanksgiving. But look at what he says in, in 
the book of Isaiah, chapter 12, verse 1. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me. Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. I'm going to read all six verses, then we'll come back and look at it. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength. Is my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord. Call upon His name. Declare His doings among the people. Make mention that His name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for He hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout. Thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. And this scripture was given by Isaiah as speaking of God's chosen people. And we know during the, their time that so many times they would fail the Lord, they would go away from Him, they would do something wrong. But we are so much like them. We being children of God, so many times even ourselves, even though that we're saved, we find ourselves sinning. We find ourselves doing things that we shouldn't be doing, thinking things that we shouldn't be thinking, uh, being in places that we shouldn't be, uh, having thoughts we shouldn't have. And there's a lot of times that we don't even understand why we react the way we do. But I want you to notice what it says. One of the first things out of this scripture that I'm thankful for is the Lord's mercy, is the Lord's forgiveness, is if the, the Lord actually forgiving me when I have failed. Look at what he says, In that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou was angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. He says, You were angry, but you comforted me. In other words, you, you forgive me. I, I, I'm glad that the Bible teaches us that we just can't go out and commit sin any time we want to. First off, the Holy Spirit's going to convict us whenever we sin. It's going to let us know that we have sinned. We are to confess that sin and ask God to forgive us. But so many times, if you're anything like me, I find myself over and over and over letting the Lord down and doing things that I shouldn't do or say or whatever. And, and I find myself just asking forgiveness all the time. But I am so glad that the Lord is gracious, that He has grace and He has mercy, and He has forgiveness that He'll give unto me as long as I am willing to confess my sin unto Him and be uh, sorry for it and be mean business with Him. I believe a lot of folks will say, Lord, I'm sorry, but they never mean that. But I believe if we mean that, then He will comfort us. The Holy Spirit will comfort us and be there in the time. So I'm thankful for what he says right off the, the bat. But then he says in verse 2, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. I am so glad that I can let the world know that I've been saved and that I can tell them about my salvation experience. I am different than this world. I need to be separate from this world. When you look at me and you look at the world, you need to see two different things. Problem is with a lot of us, when a lot of people look at our lives, can't tell much difference than us in the world. I was out with my son today. Uh, we were over in the woods of Unicoi County shooting guns, one of them men things, you know. And we was just having a good time. We was out on a shooting range over there. Some other people were there. Folks come in. And uh, we met, I told Lisa, we met some really nice people. And we all were sharing something that we liked and shooting those pistols and those rifles and, and all the bangs going off. But right in the midst of all that, I just kind of looked around and, I was just blessed at just the trees and the coolness and the, the blessing that I know <laughs> that I have in the Lord. And I just, I just told the fellows that's with I said, man, just praise the Lord. And uh, one of the other guys heard me. And we began to talk. You never know when people's paying attention to what you say and what you do. And it's important that we have a, a thinking that we're thankful unto the Lord for the surroundings that we have. But I'm thankful that I can share my salvation. I'm thankful that I had that experience. I'm thankful that the Lord Jesus Christ was willing to go to Calvary and die for my sins. I'm thankful every day. I'm not just saved on Sunday, but I'm saved every day. And I'm going to be saved tomorrow and the tomorrow and the tomorrow until one day I'm going to go to heaven. And whenever they lay me to rest, they're going to say, 
he went on home to be with the Lord because he had testified of his salvation experience in Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful for salvation. But not only that verse says, I'm thankful that I don't have to be afraid. I'm thankful that I can trust and say, if, if I just had this world to trust in, I'd be a very miserable person. You can't trust the world. There's most people you can't trust today. A lot of friends you can't even trust. But I am glad that I can trust in the Lord. He has never failed me, will never fail me. I believe he'll take care and do exactly what he's promised me over and over and over again in his word. And I'm thankful that I can trust him. I am thankful that I have that trust and that I don't have to look to this world to trust. But I'm glad that he says you don't have to be afraid. As a young and growing up, there's a lot of times I was afraid. And it seems like to me I was always in the predicament of being the one that's going to get in trouble some way or another. But I am glad that the Lord said, I'll take care of you. I'll be there, I promise you, always, even until the end. That's what he promised to, to those of us that know him. But he says in that verse, Behold, God is my salvation, and I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. I am thankful tonight that I have a place that I can get strength. I have a, a place that I can go to, a person that I can go to. Uh, it, it's good to have a good wife that loves you and you can talk about things. And, and Lisa is my best friend. <laughs> and I am thankful for her, but I am so thankful that I have one I can go to that will give me strength that she can't do. I am one that I can turn to that's going to give me strength in the time of a struggle. In the time of sorrow, in the time of grief, sometimes you don't have the words to say to people that have lost loved ones. But I'm glad I can tell people, I know where you can gain strength. The Bible says and teaches us that the Lord said, I'll give you the strength that you need. I'll give you the grace that is sufficient that gets you through. And I believe that with all my heart. So I am glad and I am thankful tonight for the strength that we can get from the Lord. But not only that. I love music. You know that I love music. I've been messing with music all my life, I guess. I was thinking yesterday, I was in here uh, looking at some scriptures and looking at some songs, and I, I, I got to thinking back when I was a kid. I even called Patty to make sure I had it right. When we were just kids growing up, we always was talking about singing and, and, and getting involved in singing, and we put together a young group just as teenagers that we'd go to uh, other churches and sing called the messengers we got us a name we got us some dresses and some suits alike that was back when the leisure suit was popular and we got us some red their maroon leisure suits yeah and uh, went and sang about the lord jesus christ a long long time ago but even in another church we put together a group of young people that sang so i've been singing all of my life but it says here in this scripture i am thankful for my song look look at how he Makes that an, in, an individual thing. You see, Brother Ralph, uh, my song may be a little different than your song. My experience may be a little different than your experience. And what I have in my heart could be a little different because of what I've been through or what I've not. But I am glad that we can look at God's Word and we can see the song that's there. We can look and, and see what He's done for us in our salvation. He gives us a song that even the angels cannot sing. And I'm glad of that. And one day we'll be able to share it. So music is a beautiful thing. It don't, it don't take long. I mean, y'all know me. I shed tears at the drop of the hat. There's a commercial on right now that's just blessing my heart. And it comes on, and I'll holler at Lisa, come watch this commercial. She gets so tired of me. I holler to her about commercials. But I, I, I see a commercial, and, and I'm sitting there in tears. It don't do a thing for her, maybe, but I'm sitting there in tears because it's just touched my heart. And, uh, but music is special. And it says, I'm thankful, or it talks about my song. It says, he also become my salvation. Let me go on. Verse 3 says, Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. I love this verse. You know, a lot of us think that we experience joy, we experience happiness, and we can talk to people out in the world. There's a lot of different things that make us happy. But I'm talking about a joy that is beyond understanding, 
It's, it's unspeakable. You, you, you can't even explain. I am so thrilled, and, and some of you may know what I mean, but uh, when, when my grandbabies come and hug me up <laughs> real big, uh, it gives me a joy that's different than even when my own young'uns will hug my neck. Uh, I mean, Bella just, just loves me to death, and I just love her to death. And I told Matthew, I am going to spoil her soul terribly rotten. Uh, but I love the grandbabies. Don't, you know what I'm talking about? It gives you joy. But do you know and do you realize that the joy that we have even in that is not like the joy that we can have in Christ Jesus? The fellowship that we can have with an almighty God, being able to be ushered into the holy place and speak to him ourselves and know that he went to Calvary and died for your sin, my sin, individually. And because we know that and we experience that, and every day we experience the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, there's a joy in that that we can't even be able to explain to the world and that the world will never know about until they experience it themselves. There's a joy. And I'm so thankful for the joy that we have. But look at what it says. That you shall draw water out of the wells of salvation. Man, I'm glad for that. Because, see, there's life in the water. All of us know that. It's good common sense. Good rain comes, the grass looks better. A poor old plant is all wilted down and dried up. You put a little water on it, give it just a few minutes, and that plant just revives itself. You know why? It's because of the water. There's life in the water. Do you realize what he's saying in that verse? Draw water out of the wells of salvation. I'm so glad that this water will never run dry, that this water will always be available. This water will be there for my growth. It'll be there for my strength. It'll be there for my encouragement. It'll be there for me to be better tomorrow than I may have been today because I've looked to the Lord to ask Him to supply the need. I'm so thankful for what the water gives me. Let me go on. And in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord. Call upon His name. Declare His doings. I am thankful that we get to declare His doings. Now look at that for just a second. Do you know what He's talking about there? Well, I believe that we can declare... Everything that the Lord has done for us, everything that he's granted us, everything that he's given us, every time that we were in a trial or that we were in problems or we were in trouble and there are, that we committed sin and we uh, understood and experienced that forgiveness, we, we were able to experience him moving in our life, for him relieving the pressure, for him carrying the burden, picking it up actually and carrying it for you. Have you ever experienced the fact that you were so burdened with something and you just prayed and prayed, didn't seem like an answer come, but you kept on praying and finally the burden was lifted? I, I, I believe that the Lord does that all the time. I'm glad for the protection going down the highway. I was just the other day, I was going down the road, and all of a sudden a truck passed me, and he had to get back in real quick, and how he missed me, I don't know. I don't think I even told Lisa about this, but just in a, in a second there, uh, it, it could have been over with for me and him and maybe somebody else. I don't know. But it wasn't because I believe the Lord was watching over. I believe he was protecting, and that's there all the, all the time, every day of my life. Uh, so there's so much to give us. Uh, there's so many things to declare, and I'm glad that we could, you know, we're living in a day and time when everybody wants their say. You notice that? There's shows on TV now that will say things and talk about things than we would have never seen just a few years ago. There's, there's talk shows. There's a ladies, uh, I don't call them ladies, there's a women talk show comes on every day. And I won't mention any names. I won't, but, but their, their topic is now is to to be able to say so, be able to speak it out and say so. Well, I guess whatever's on your mind. We're living in a day and time when people want to declare a lot of things. Well, this scripture tells me that I can declare who God is. I can declare who Jesus is. I can declare what he's done for me. And, and we need to do it if there's ever a time that people need to see Jesus in our life and hear it come from us. It's today. But I'm glad and I'm thankful that we can de declare his doings. Look at what he says. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. We need to exalt his name. We need to let other people know that his name needs to be exalted. I just wonder when people bow their head tomorrow over their big turkey or over their big ham, how many of them will actually say, Lord, thank you for what you've given us and what you've done for us. Thank you for this food. I'm real proud of Madison. 
we don't go anywhere. We don't ever sit down to a meal. <laughs> if I, I'm hungry and I'm real quick and I'm anxious and I grab that roll and start, she'll say, Daddy, she says, we ain't prayed yet. Uh, we need to have prayer. We need to bless the food. And I'm thankful for that. But I'm thankful that we can declare his doings to the people, among the people. Let me go on real quick. It says, Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Now notice what this says. I'm glad and I'm thankful that there's excellent things for us to talk about. Not just normal things. Not just usual things. But when you talk about God and what He's done and what He does do and what He will do, the power that He gives us, the power that we experience, the power that we see, it's excellent things. When we speak of Him, it's about excellent things. You know, people like to, to, to brag about what they've accomplished in this world. This world has never, ever, and never will meet up to what God is and what God can do. We need to exalt His name and talk about those excellent things. He says, these things are known in all the earth. Some people say, I don't believe in God, but they actually do. Some people say, well, I, I, don't, I don't believe in what the Bible says. But they, they, if you get right down to it, they believe in a, in a higher power. They believe God. They believe that there's a God, if they'll just admit it. But he says, in all the world, the world's going to understand. The earth is going to understand about these excellent things. And then in verse 6, he says, Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Last but not least, I can cry out and I can shout to the world. I have the liberty. I have the satisfaction. I can do that today about letting this world know. And he says here in this scripture, this great one, this holy one, is in the midst of thee. I believe that God is on his throne. But I believe with all my heart that he walks with me every day. That he is in my life every day. And that he experiences everything that I do in my life, whether it's good or whether it's bad. He is a part of it every day of my life. Because I believe when I got saved many, many years ago, the Holy Spirit moved in and dwells within me and is part of my life. And I'm thankful for that. I've, I've said many times in, in, in uh, giving my testimony that I'm so glad for the Holy Spirit that convicts me, that draws me, that comforts me, that, that ha I have a relationship with. I, I, I love my family, but my family cannot meet me at that table over the word of the Lord and fellowship with me like the Holy Spirit can. And I'm glad that I can have that. And I'm glad I can know that. And I, I feel sorry for how many Christians may be out there that never experience the relationship that they can have with an almighty God. But he loves us tonight, and I'm so thankful. So these were kind of odd things, but I, I told Lisa as I was studying, and it, this just kind of jumped out at me. And I thought in those verses of Scripture, there's so much, and in just the very few minutes, I didn't even touch the things that are really here. But we have so much in the Lord to be thankful for. So much in our relationship with Him. And I'm so thankful for what He is. I'm thankful for what He's done. I'm thankful that He's there. And I love the fact that it begins by saying, I know I've messed up and you've been upset with me. But I'm thankful that you forgive. And I'm thankful that you encourage me even though I've messed up. And I'm so thankful for that. I hope that you'll look at this scripture. You'll think about it. We're going to have a word of prayer again. But before I dismiss you, I want to just give you an opportunity. If somebody among us uh, wants to say a word, you're welcome to do that. Uh, it is, uh, it's still early yet, We got, and I knew this would be pretty short and sweet. But I, I've just brought you what I felt like was on my heart, and I hope that you'll read that scripture over again, and that it can be a blessing to you. Let's bow for another word of prayer. Father, we just thank you again that we can bow before you. Thank you, Lord, that we have this time that we can call on your name. Lord, we realize that we are so fragile. Lord, we, we just break up at any little thing that happens in life these days. Sometimes we're such a weak vessel. Sometimes, Lord, we let you down so pitifully. Father, I just thank you that you forgive us. I thank you you give us a, a, a chance to confess those things, Lord, and that you're there. I thank you for your comfort. I thank you for your guidance, Lord. I thank you that you've done these things that we've mentioned in this scripture. And I thank you, Lord, for your word. 
Well, we don't open it up enough. We ought to be opening it up every day and reading every day from what you have to say to us. And help us, Lord, to do that. But I pray that you just help us when we do open it up, Lord, that we'd feed from the words that's there that's given to us. Thank you, Lord, again for these that are here tonight. We just pray again that you'll be with those that are sick and unable to go tonight. Lord, I pray that the few words we've said will be a blessing, will be a help, will be an encouragement to these that are here. Again, bless our pastor, Lord. I pray you'd be with him, strengthen him, be with our church. Help us, Lord, as we're during this time. Lord, help our church folks, Lord. A lot of these that we've not seen in months and months, Lord, I pray you'd speak to their hearts. For those, Lord, that are just backslidden away from you, that are cold and indifferent, don't really care whether they come to church or not, don't really care, Lord, whether they pick up their Bible and read or not, don't really care, Lord, if they even say a word to you and pray. And we've got a lot of folks in that place. Lord, I pray you'd speak to their hearts, that you'd convict the sin that may be in their lives. Lord, and I pray that they'd come to see that they need to come to you. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Thank you for what's coming. Lord, we get excited when we think about what is to come. Lord, I just pray that you just bless and use us now. Thank you again for all you've done, for letting us be here tonight. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Anybody got a word on your heart? Anybody got a Thanksgiving praise you want to share? It's still early. Like the pastor says, well, we're a long time before time to help yourself. Help yourself. Amen.